Hi, and welcome to Blue Lotus Garden. My name is Blue Phoenix. My plant channel where I keep it planty. I share my found knowledge and experiences on here. Also a plant vlog on Wednesdays of, my, of what I do behind the scenes of my plant shop, my home-based plant shop, Blue Lotus Gardens. So you get to see what I do on a daily basis um, and just kind of keep it fun throughout the, throughout the whole time. If that is something that you're interested in, I recommend subscribing down below, liking our videos, and then also um, commenting down below if you have any questions about anything in the video or if you have any recommendations. Always happy to hear. All right, on to the video. All right, so New Year, we're going to um, do Plant Care Tuesday videos where we highlight a plant, um, and then I'll do a poll, as you see on from here, on my Instagram, I did a poll, and then uh, you all got to choose between which one, and we got, we will talk about it on Tuesdays. And you all chose the Syngonium uh, Pedophyllum Albo Variegata, which is one of my favorite plants. It's one of my wish list plants. Um, I have always watched plant channels and then I just have always been really excited whenever I see a plant and it's just really cool now that I get to experience these and then share these amongst other people. Um, I do sell them and every now and then I do also gift them away so if you um I I, I if you've received one like I just really um hope you enjoy it and there's a lot of care in it and um so that way it helps live on um so in today's video we're talking about the syngonium albo portophyllum so yeah this is the albo syngonium albo right here as you see it has a new foliage um i do keep my plant room here studio in a higher humidity so it does I uh, tend to be in a more um, humid environment um, and I'll show you. So currently it is at 87. Usually like this is like the average of what I have, my humidity inside. Um, and then it's just like 70 degrees Fahrenheit because of the heater. Um, and that is where I keep it every now and then, um, when I need, especially right now in the winter time, I kind of boost it up just a little bit. Um, and that's because, uh, if not, then you'll, you'll see browning on the leaves and I only have one grow tent. So, um, you can't just stuff them all in there. Even though I wish I could, but it'll just cost a lot of pests in there. What you, what I do is I rotate them out and, um, I try to keep this one more in there because it does require a little bit more of a higher bright um, lighting condition in order to keep its variegation going. That's where it leads us to lighting. Uh, so for lighting, I uh, keep this in a va in, in my grow tent. It's set at 25%. Uh, so that's where I keep it. And then also you, you'll see in this next clip. So I've been facing over here. It's in an east facing window. So that way uh, they receive some good light. I get a good view of the backyard over here as well, so I can see my chickens. <laughs> as you saw from that clip, I keep it in a east-facing window, and so it receives plenty of light. Um, and that because that's where like I have all my plants that I bottom water. So for watering, um, I always su I suggest bottom watering it. That way, you kind of like it to um, gauge on how heavy it is. The heavier the pot is the more um, water it's retaining, the more moisture, so always make note of that. Um, I That's just how I've learned. Um, I used to um, top water it, um, and I do every now and then, but I don't as much because in my experience, I've learned that it reduces the amount of pests um, that it creates on top, like the gnats, so, um, I try to do that, try to bottom water it, and then and then just like really um, disinfect and clean the totes that they're in. So, um, like, 
they're in these kind of totes and then I just water it about a fourth of the way up to here uh, and if it needs more watering I'll do that again um, and then remove the ones that are already in here that are sufficient uh, in water but they do love water um, they in botanical gardens you will see them like uh, you might see them um, next to like a riverbed or like some sort of waterfall feature um, they do love that high high higher humidity um, and then also um, a like higher water so um, it does like to be more moist um, but not like saturated in water it is an aeroid so it does like to be um, in its chunky aeroid type of soil mixture and if you have any questions you can always feel free to ask me so I keep it over there when I'm bottom watering the plants um, and then over here behind me is a south facing window so uh, propagations are usually behind me and then um, more like sun loving plants I just made this little arrangement over here just because I thought it'd be nice to have in the shot so what I'm learning about the variegation with this this one is that if it even has just like a slight bit of variegation i say hold on to it because like if i could just show you mine uh this one is another syngonium aloe it has very low um variegation on the foliage um and i'm just keeping it this one i'm rarely i rarely put it in my grow tent and that's to see if, if it'll just pop variegation if it's in like this east facing window so that helps out for me to understand lighting and the conditions and how to uh, troubleshoot it so that way I know where it is best for my environment uh, and just quickly I live in a 8b climate zone so that way uh, if anybody is wondering but it does have like these low variegation leaves right here this is its newest one it's hardening off and then some of these just have like very like speckles of variegation in it so um, I'm trying to see if they'll all push out because like this is two cuttings this is two cuttings <laughs> from uh, two cuttings over here. So it was like four cuttings all together, right? And then um, it was just one big tall one. I think I even made a video of it where I um, went to a plant swap. And so um, if you like, I'll link it up above. And that way, and then down below also, I'll, I'll post all the plant swap videos that I went to at uh, Rar and Sons Brewing Company. Really fun times. Um, and so ever since then, it's been fat. It's been growing really fast. It's put off a lot of like growth, a lot of babies. Um, I have a four inch uh, one in there that has super low variegation, and it. And I'm trying to see if if I keep it in there, if it'll just like pop up more variegation from it. So uh, that's a great uh, way to see it. It's just like. You just kind of like troubleshoot it a little bit and you figure it out and really what works best for you this is also its juvenile form it will have larger foliage and it'll uh, it'll just be nicer and they are aeroids so uh, if you'd like I you could put them on a pole uh, they are climbers and they do want to like climb onto something as um, and so I will be putting these on a pole. I'll be putting them on a Coco Quar pole. Um, because that's what I have. And uh, just to see how they just to see how they grow. Um, I they propagate really easily. So if you're going to propagate this plant, you're going to want to I'm trying to grab a saucer. So you're going to want to look for uh, these little aerial roots. When you're propagating them, you can propagate them by water, you can propagate them by sphagnum moss, uh, and then also by soil if you like. Um, you could just place the uh, 
propagation right along the, the soil. Don't submerge it into the soil, but just make sure it's laid on top and then just keep it lightly misted um, and until it really like takes root into the soil. And then from there you can like bottom water it or um, top water it if that's what you prefer. Uh, but that's how you can you can propagate it. Um, for me, best is sphagnum moss because that's I just put them all in sphagnum moss um, and then I keep them in the grow tent until I see the roots are just really like good. I can come back to it and then place them into uh, soil. This is not an elbow. This is my Syngonia mojito, but um, a good tip also is to. Uh, add sphagnum moss onto the top. The reason for this, it allows the roots to really like take hold of uh, the substrate and grow better. Um, so you'll have like better aerial roots. And then if you see in there, it's like really, really going. So it, it likes that a lot. It's growing really well. And you can wrap it with, with like saran wrap if you like but I, I just prefer to like leave it like that and then just there. <laughs> They're really fun, easy to care plants. Um, I will say <laughs> there's a lot of them and once you get into them you might start to venture into other ones. I have a mojito. <laughs> I also have a three kings. I have a pink syngonium and then I have a strawberry ice and um, they're just really really great plants I love them um, I, I love how viney they look and all of their big foliage and different colors and patterns and I just I love it all and it's like I, I love colorful plants as you see here and they just really bring joy to me. So I hope to bring joy to others. That pop out like this. And then you're going to want to um, chop below it. Um, especially if this one puts out a um, a green leaf you want to chop that up so that way uh, the next one up has a chance for it to revert back to uh, some variegation um, I do not want to chop this one up because uh, the variegation on it looks really stable and so if I chop this I might have a risk of the next one being reverted so because if you, if you see down here, like look at that, that stem. This is all from my experience also, by the way, and I just want to say that um, from what I've noticed. Uh, because in the beginning I was just like chopping it up and then I would notice that sometimes when it has this nice beautiful variegation like this, uh, if I do chop it up, the next one might become green. So I kind of just let it grow out a little bit and then I chop it up. Um, like I give it uh, some layers. It's like a couple a couple layers to kind of give it insurance into giving it more, it already has stable variegation, but you just want to let, for me personally, I just want to ensure that the next one is nicer. As And I mean, you know, like, I feel like I'm doing something right. Okay, so look at this one right here. And then um, stay tuned, I'll probably do a short where it's unfurling so you can see that it has really nice variegation. And I have not wanted to um, propagate it just because I might also have a chance of it uh, dying off and it's just too pretty to risk it. So I'm not going to. These do love a good um, soil mixture that is um, of a heavier um, aerated soil mixture. So like some cocoa husk in there, um, 
perlite. Uh, you can do this with like general um, house plant mix as as I have it here because that's all I have it had it at the moment, um, and that's just I'm I'm, not, I'm allowing it to like the, the I'm allowing it to develop its roots before I I pot it into a bigger container that's more chunkier and airier. Uh, don't want to disturb the roots at the moment, but it's already chunky and aerated, but it could be better. In my opinion, as you see here, it has perlite, um, a bit of orchid bark. Uh, it's a general house plant mix, but I recently switched over um, to Fox Farm. So I bought a, a really large bag and uh, that's what I'm gonna be using from now on. But if you don't have a grow light and you're trying to get more variegation like this, um, do not put it in direct sunlight. That will definitely scorch the leaves. It needs like a nice good shady area. If it's gonna be in outside, I mean, I once, but it was like very shady and it had just very bright indirect light. I did it for like three hours to test it out and it was, it was okay. It's fine. It was in its younger, sta younger stages before it got this big, but I mean, I, I, I troubleshoot and I try to figure out, you know, what works best for me and what works best for the plant also so i mean you just gotta do what you gotta do and figure things out and we get curious sometimes so might as well figure it figure it out this one is the the is it is this plant so these two are like the parent plant the parent foliage as you see they're very low but this one is the newest foliage right up under here and that's where it looks like it has a higher variegation on it than this one and I remember I chopped this one back down because it had very 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 low variegation so sometimes you just gotta you just gotta see what works and cut away and figure it out but they're growing really fast and really uh, really uh really good in my opinion uh they could be better of, of course but i think they're great they're happy i clean their leaves with um, a little bit of like coconut oil um i use and then some water i delete dilute that and i just a little towel wipe down the leaves um, and then for pest control i use um this brand called safer so i use this brand called safer um it's neem oil rt rtu so it's Fungicide, miticide, insecticide. Um, it's organic, so you can use that. It's an official organic uh, neem oil ready to use. It does smell a lot, so just be careful. Before I forget, I do want to mention, do not use um, neem oil. I think it's just any kind of neem oil on velvety type leaves that is not a good choice for that and then also um, if you're going to place it in grow lights do not uh like turn off your grow lights until they like they fully dried out and everything because if you don't you will suffer and you will get damage on your foliage so let me show you what happens so this happens if you leave them in grow, in grow lights they'll like get burnt really bad and get damaged so it's like i just i noticed it from these two foliages and i just had to like leave it alone until they grow out and remove themselves somehow but it's a healthy plant it's just that's what happens whenever like uh, you spray it with neem oil and then you put them in under grow lights for a little bit and then um, I do, and then I also mix my soil with um, diatomaceous earth. Um, so I make sure that the plants that people are receiving are not going to have pests. And sometimes they do also have cinnamon in them. In them. And that's just how I, just, just how I always done it. So if you see like little brown stuff or little white stuff, um, it's either perlite, cinnamon, or diatomaceous earth. Uh, and then you're always welcome to message me on Instagram. Um, I have my Instagram um, down below so that way you can message me and ask me any questions about 
propagations, about plants, about the plants we have, um, any concerns you might have, um, any questions about the website also um, you might have. I do want to mention this is my website. It's a great website where I share uh, my found knowledge, so I'll do blog posts, forums, and I also have a little shop on there where I have my merchandise um, and then plants that I grow, uh, mystery sub boxes, subscriptions, so you'll get some really good plants that I'm growing for the plant shop, so you'll see that. Um, it's basically like um, nothing but plants. I, 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 I personally wanted to get on a website where I it was just plants nothing but plants like just plants and so that's where I have I decided to make it and um, it's growing there's some there's 12 members and thank you so much for joining and um, there's like groups in there and then I also post plants that I'm trading so if you're welcome to join it's free it's down below and um, it helps me just like really share my found knowledge, learn from others, grow from others, people grow from, from, from us, and then also support. I do this full time and I just enjoy it. This is, this is great. Um, this is what I have always really been passionate about, about sustainability, growing my, my house plants, and then also sharing that knowledge with others. And so that's this um, definitely a great way. I also just want to thank all my Patreon members, uh, my new ones, my um, my current ones. Uh, I I really appreciate it all. There's exclusive merch for you. You don't have to do anything. It gets sent to you once your address is provided. We'll be doing a giveaway soon. Um, so if you are so if you watch this video, stay tuned. It's going to be for my members. So for my members um, on my website, once you join, I will uh, post um, a on a forum um, for giveaways and then on how to enter it. And then that way you can enter it and um, help grow our, our plant shop. It's been a really great journey, um, just a really great journey from where we came from and all the way to now. Um, I mean, I even have chickens now, and so I'm just so excited about that. And then uh, you all are just have been so amazing with all your support and what you uh, and how you supported us in every single way. And I really just want to thank y'all. So thank you so much. Um, if y'all have any questions, always feel free to comment down below. Y'all have a great day wherever, wherever it is. Peace, everyone. I think Syngoniums are, are just going to always be gorgeous no matter what. They are so beautiful. This leaf right here. <laughs> Bye, everyone.